Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's the J Gemini. This afternoon, I wanted to make a uh, really high level, easy video on how to make, uh, or sorry, use the WorkSharp uh, Precision Adjust system. Basically, I'm going in and showing it in action and put a really simple, quick edge on this QSP Penguin. Um, this is an amazing knife, absolutely love it. Um, and it's still pretty sharp. It doesn't look like the apex is flattened too much, but I do want to just get it a little sharper and probably lay back the edge just ever, ever so slightly. So, um, let me go ahead and take apart the knife. I'll kind of quickly go through that. Really a great knife. I um, It's a knife that generally isn't in my rotation too often, but whenever I do go through my uh, drawer, and I actually see wherever it is, I'm like, ooh, yeah, that. Um, and it's still crazy that the uh, action on this guy sometimes beats out knives that are way above, on bearings even. So, and it, it has a firm, hard firing detent. It's something pretty cool about it, for sure. All right. So that's all out of the way. Let me go ahead and mount it into the system next. Move this and these. Okay. Now, what we're gonna do with the system is I, as you can see, have put tape down both sides. So if I have a knife, I don't have to worry about the back of the blade here going ahead and being scratched up because this is metal. So what we're gonna do, we're actually going to take the jaws, lay them open, and we're gonna set the blade in. And we're gonna push it all the way back and roughly align it even with the blade. You also want the blade kind of at the same angle as the uh, the line here. Especially on a Warren Cliff like this. What we're going to do is we're going to look at it from the top to make sure that it's not leaning one way or another. Now on a knife that has sort of a grind like this, it's not so much of a problem because as you screw this down, I believe it does actually suck back into the blade, uh, into these these clamps a little bit, but like when you're doing something like a Spyderco or something you want to be kind of wary because you're barely gripping something uh, at the top. Okay. You're barely gripping a, a little bit of the knife. This is basically gripping the whole thing. And then you slide it back in. Now the white um, right here basically means like show side because when you're when you're swapping it, you push here and then you rotate like this. So if you have a handle on it, like I would normally, and just have this to show it to make it easier, less distracting, and also because, you know, I, was, I had to clean the knife anyways. But usually you, you, you don't want the handle on the other side where it's pushing down onto the table. You want it where it goes up towards the sky when you rotate it. So push that in because this does have a little bit of movement. Barely, you can get mods and stuff. But as of now, I don't have that, and this isn't like a super expensive knife. Although, however, I am still gonna go ahead and do a good job at the edge. What you wanna do is you wanna take a Sharpie, and you basically wanna mark right at the edge. And the reason why this is done is it allows you to see when you are removing the material you can also see what the cut is of the, the edge because when you have a knife and you're setting the edge, what a Sharpie like this can help do is let you know if, hey, you're getting the back here, but you haven't yet reached that tip. Keep sharpening here and so on and so forth. So it makes sure that you get the whole edge so you don't wind up with like a belly, if this was a knife with a belly, sharp, and then the tip area is dull. 
Also, if you want to check the angle of your edge with this system, what you can do is use the least aggressive stone here, which is a ceramic rod, and run it back and forth and see how it removes the Sharpie. It's not going to really remove any material quickly, so you don't have to worry about it reprofiling the edge, but you can check to see if you're way off. Another thing, I'm doing mine at about 19, 18.5, I believe this is about 2021 20, from the factory, so I'm making the edge smaller, which brings this bezel, or well, the edge up higher. Not such a big deal on a knife like this, but one thing to keep notice of is on a knife that has a DLC coating, bringing that up can change the way the knife looks, and if you're kind of like me, that can kind of bother uh, you know, some, some of us. So just something to kind of keep in mind. If you have a DLC knife and you're sort of particular about that stuff, you might want to research what that angle is. Keep it very similar to that realm. Now, with any, I think the first time you sharpen any knife, even if you're setting it in the same angle, I would recommend starting with a grit stone just to lock in that true edge uniform-wise. And then each time you go and sharpen it back and touch it up, then you just use the medium and the fine. Since this is the first time I'm doing this, I'm going to use the aggressive um, coarse grit and go from there. So, start over here. And you just simply go up and down like this. Across the blade. Stone, as well as a little bit of pressure for myself to do all the work. I'm not pushing, I'm not bending down. Now, as you can see from this short time, I'm hitting this edge and I'm hit, uh, the tip all the way through. As well, I'm going ahead and getting this right here. This edge right here has not gotten. Uh, cut yet because there's a barely little bit of um, Sharpie down here. So I want to continue to work that edge there Basically to cut back at the top and once the back the top gets which is like a ledge gets cut down the um, Stone will settle a little lower and start to cut that or remove material on that as well What you also want to be checking for is run your finger across which the Sharpie's now dry So it's not getting on my finger for a burr that basically develops. It's like a little thing that grabs your finger. You can feel it run as your finger runs softly across the back or your, the top of your nail sometimes, which this definitely for much short time hasn't yet made a burr. So we're going to keep Something I also was uh, am wanting to let you guys know on a blade like this that's sunken back in, maybe not so important, but usually I would actually recommend any time that you're doing this to actually mark a line with a sharpie or put a piece of tape right here uh, on like a DLC blade. That way, if you are clamped on a knife that you have to rotate the edge, uh, you know, in a way that it'll get the belly and the tip really well. Um, that you're, it's not slowly moving over time. But on this, not too worried, not a big deal. Not a real big... Definitely a burr that's uh, been developed here along this edge that's grabbing. It's not really a deep burr, but it's you can definitely feel it. Right about there, and a little bit there. So we're probably just gonna hit it for another moment just to make sure that burr gets deep back here. And then we're gonna flip sides. Yeah, 
there has definitely been a more a noticeable now across the whole entire edge grabbing except right there well actually there is and there's no sharpie here so <laughs> We're just gonna call it. So now we're gonna flip. And I'm just gonna do the same thing really fast. So it isn't super duper long. Now. Created a burr here. This is just the only spot that hasn't, and it's because of that recurve that we were talking about. Or smile over here. That's why the shark is good, because I know I'm good here, but not here. So I might want to focus a little bit on here, but you still want to kind of go back and forth just so you don't start deforming the natural shape of the blade. And my goal isn't to get all this off up here because my ankle isn't set back enough. So there is black line right here. My goal is to get to the edge and create a burr. Because once a burr has been created, that means the, the stone is actually sunken enough where it starts to push the steel over to the other side where you can feel it on your finger, which means that that edge is set in at that angle well. Okay. Okay. All right, so now we're gonna flip to the next stone. And once you set the edge angle, it shouldn't take as long with the other. The reprofiling and getting the edge locked in is the part that's the most time uh, labor and ten, you know time um, intensive. Afterwards, this is just now polishing the edge and creating another burr on the other side, flipping and doing it again. So. necessarily have to do this now that the edge has been set but I just like to I like to watch it be removed because really you're just searching for the burr now so see this is quick there's already been a burr that's been created here on this side and I'm just going to check the pattern across the edge here okay just to see how the scratches look because you, you know the more time you necessarily take to remove the scratches that are there the sharper that edge is going to be Okay, take a little bit more time. Nice big deep burr. And the scratches look a little bit more uniform here. I'm gonna flip it over. So if I check the scratches on this side, I see that they're really 
raw and aggressive. Well, on that side, it looks a little bit more like one sheet with little scratches in it instead of like a lot of scratches. So that's what that uh, is doing over time when you're sharpening. just to create a little bit of a deeper burr. And what you'll... And what you'll feel when you're sharpening this is you'll feel the system lock in. You'll feel basically it's smooth out and it sort of locks in. There's no more material, there's less resistance, everything like that. Yeah. You also don't want to go too far over because then it'll start to roll the stone like right over here you just want to maybe go you know three-fourths of the way over or halfway over um, you know not past past that access point where the stone rolls because then you can round that tip okay and this should be pretty quick I'm not going to sharpen it. At this point, I'm not looking necessarily for a burr, although I can definitely feel one. I'm more so looking for the edge to be more unanimous and polished. This is kind of like a semi-polished edge. You would continue to go up and up and up in grits if you want to, uh, you know, get it sharper and sharper and sharp, sharper, but this system will give you a really good, like, working edge, basically. It'll get you, like, you know, 85, 88% of the way there, 90% of the way there. Any of the other finishing is just really, literally, for lack of a better word, it's chasing that bleeding edge of, you know, the edge retention and the performance. if it makes a difference but basically so there's not a burr on both sides I will take the edge and I'll sort of sweep down making sure yeah it pushes that burr to the other side essentially just a couple times times one two two times on this side and 
then one each. And here's the blade. The last thing I'm actually gonna do, real quick, I'm gonna get some cardboard. I don't have a leather strap, but basically there's this little tiny burr that I basically moved over and now it's kind of like right in the middle. And so hitting it with cardboard should help. and then you pull it against, away from the edge, so it's not cutting. Okay, and that's like a semi-polished, semi-polished edge there. Here's the last bit, here's some paper. Ho, ho, ho. I don't know if it'll cut hairs yet, but no. But it is definitely sharp for sure. So basically that's the video. Um, hopefully with me speeding it up and everything it won't be too long I'm gonna mount the knife back in the chassis and everything like that the blade uh, But yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. Hopefully that was simple enough to kind of see how I like to do things again You can push it even further by getting lapping films to then take it to the next edge or you can get custom stone holders that'll go up, you know to 2,000 and then 5,000 and then 10,000, 20,000 grit to really get a mere polish. There's a lot of different ways to chase that. Again, I would recommend maybe like a leather strap or something like that to really get that edge to sing um, and just knock down that final burr. But really, other than that, that's it. That's how you use the system itself. Just progress up, look for that burr, use the Sharpie, um, and then, you know, eventually you'll end up coming up to this edge right here. So, Hope everybody enjoyed the video. If you do, please go ahead and give a like. Um, also subscribe as we're constantly trying to grow the channel and there's a lot more content to come. And of course, comment down below if you have any questions. Love fellowshipping with you guys and answering that stuff. Everybody have a great rest of your day. Peace.